Hello everyone, we hope you're doing well. Today, we're bringing you episode 36, and in the sixth introductory episode to Firewall, we'll be testing the five main processes of the routing flow based on the three main types of expected traffic, namely input, forward, and output. In previous sessions, we mentioned that there are five main processes inside the routing flow, and each of them consists of a number of smaller steps, as can be seen here. Let's start with input traffic. This is the path of the input traffic when it enters the routing flow via point I, hitting the two processes of pre-routing and input process before exiting the routing flow via point J and toward the local processes of the router. Therefore, input traffic has to go through the pre-routing process with these five stages and the input process with the four stages shown here. In this module, we're not concerned with hotspot or queues. Moreover, connection tracking is an active stage through which the packet passes, but we're not going to set any actions for it. Therefore, the stages which we need to configure for logging are raw pre-routing, manual pre-routing, and destination NAT, as well as manual input and filter input, which, based on their rows and columns, are stages 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 1, and 2, 2. To set up these configurations in order, we'll refer to the IP menu and the firewall submenu to create the rules one by one. To avoid repetition, note that the protocol for all of these rules is ICMP and their action is log. First, from the raw tab, we will set a raw rule with the pre-routing chain and 1-2 as its log prefix. Next, we'll go to the mangle tab create a mangle rule with the pre-routing chain and 1.4 as the prefix. Step 3 is the NAT table, where we'll create a NAT rule with destination NAT for its chain and 1.5 as the prefix. Afterward, for the two steps of the input process, we'll first refer to the mangle tab, create another mangle rule, this time with the input chain and the prefix 2.1. And finally, go to the Filter tab, create an input filter with 2.2 as a log prefix. Now, to send an input traffic to the Class AP, we'll use the Tray New Router to ping the address of 10.0.0.254 on the Class AP. As the ping begins, we'll first see that a row showing the connection between 10.0.0.1 and 10.0.0.254 is registered in the Connections table. And if we take a close look at the log records, we can see that the stages we expected to see are all here, including 1, 2, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 1, and 2, 2. Here, we have a few very important things to mention. If you look further in the log records, you can see that the connection state of the first step, that is 1, 2, is invalid, while the connection state of the rest of the entries is new. In addition, if you let the ping continue and scroll down in your log records, you can see that stage 1.5, that is the destination NAT, is no longer repeated like the others. Moreover, apart from 1.2 with the invalid connection state, the rest of the records show their connection state as established. The question is, where is 1.5 and why some stages like the destination NAT are shown only for the very first ping packet? To answer this question, we need to refer to the connections table. As we mentioned, the connection between 10.0.0.1 and 10.0.0.254 is registered here. And generally speaking, this registration takes place when a connection with the new state is registered for the first time and then its connection state changes to established. Now, if we refer to our process stages, since destination NAT comes after connection tracking, once the connection is registered by the passing of the first ping packet and the rest of the packets for that same connection continue, they first come upon the connection tracking stage and using the registered information in the connections table, they no longer have the need for destination NAT and follow on their path inside the routing flow. The significance of the connections table is that each router has a limited capacity of entries in this table the number of which are based on the device's resources, mainly its CPU and RAM. Therefore, more connection entries in this table equal higher usage of hardware resources. 
As a result, when the connection state changes from new to established, and some actions such as destination NAT are only conducted once, router resources are saved to help with the performance of your device. As a side note, bear in mind that connections which show states such as invalid, new, or established are known as stateful connections, and connections without these states are called stateless connections. More on this topic later. If you want to test the effect of connection tracking in this particular example, all you need to do is to first stop your ping, either remove this particular connection or wait for its timeout, and then restart your ping. By doing so, you will again see stage 1.5, that is destination NAT, among the log records of the first ping packet. The second important point here is the significance of the connections table and connection tracking. We'll talk about this subject in more details later, but you should always be aware of the settings regarding connection timeouts based on your network design, active users, traffic volume, and bandwidth. Based on your needs, if your timeouts are too short, your router will reset the connections again and again that will lead to unnecessary resource usage. Too long and you'll have lengthy connections and a clogged up connections table and even run security risks. Therefore, connection timeouts must be set to an optimum level that best suit your requirements. And the third lesson here is that connection tracking is a suitable point of reference for firewall settings. In the routing flow, we have two connection tracking stages. So we can categorize firewall settings into configurations that come before or after connection tracking. Now let's get to forwarded traffic. As you see on their way to be passed through by the router, forwarded packets come upon the pre-routing, forward and post-routing stages and exit the router via point L on their way toward the physical out interface. Thus, they first have to go through the five pre-routing steps, then the five forward steps and finally finish their journey within the routing flow by going through the post-routing stages. The steps shown in red and marked by numbers on top as their logging prefixes are the ones that will set up for logging. Connection tracking in the pre-routing process will take place automatically and as for packets TTL, they will be decreased by one since they make one hop once they pass through the routing decision in the routing flow. If you're not familiar with network hops, we direct you to episode 12 on trace routes for a better understanding. For these configurations, again with the ICMP protocol and the log action for all settings, we'll start with the pre-routing process. First, we'll create a new raw record in the raw table with the pre-routing chain and 1.2 as its log prefix. Next, we'll go to the mangle tab, create a mangle rule with the pre-routing chain and 1.4 as the prefix. And then, we'll refer to the NAT table, create a destination NAT rule and 1.5 as the prefix. Next, we have two steps to set in the forward process. First, we'll refer to the mangle table and create a mangle rule with the forward chain and 3.3 as its prefix. And then, we'll go to the filter table, create a forward firewall rule with 3.4 for the log prefix. And finally, we need to set up the post routing steps. First, we need a mangle rule with the post routing chain and 5.1 as its log prefix. And then, we need a source NAT rule which we already have in place when we were setting up our MTCNA home lab. Since the action of this source NAT rule is masquerade, make sure you check the log option in the actions tab and write 5.2 as its log prefix. Now, to send forwarded traffic through the class AP, we will ping the address of 8888 from 10001 on the trainee router. Once the ping starts on the trainee router and the results come in, you can first see that the connection between 10001 and 8888 has been registered on the connections table of the class AP. Moreover, all the stages that we expected to see in our log records from 1 to all the way up to 5 to can be seen here. However, for the destination and source NAT steps, that is steps 1, 5 and 5, 2, 
a similar situation as before applies and they are visible for the log records of the first ping packet when their connection state is new but if you scroll down for the other log records steps 15 and 52 are missing when the connection state of the logs turns into established and as for the third type of expected traffic we have output which will be generated by the class ap itself enter the routing flow from point k pass the routing decision and hit the output and post routing processes and finally exit the router from point l toward the physical out interface thus output traffic generated by the router hits the different stages of the output process and then goes through the different steps of the post routing process before exiting the routing flow therefore stages 42 44 45 51 and 52 are the steps we'll configure and similar to previous traffic the ping packets will also hit connection tracking as well to set up our configurations again with the icmp protocol and the log action we'll first refer to the raw table create an output raw rule with 42 as the log prefix then we'll refer to the mangle table create an output mangle rule with the log prefix of 44 and after that as the last output stage we'll go to the filter table create a new firewall rule with the output chain and 45 as the log prefix afterward it is time for our post routing processes so just as we did for forwarded traffic we will first refer to the mangle table and create a mangle rule with the post routing chain and the log prefix of 51 and as the last stage we need to create the source nat rule with the prefix of 52 which is already in place now to create output traffic we need to ping the address of 8888 from the class ap which by default will be generated from the ip address of 172.31.252.100 assigned to the ether1 to internet interface instances of output traffic include ping packets scripts and scheduled device actions to create this traffic we'll go to the ping tool on the class ap and ping 8888 once the ping starts you'll see that the connection between 172.31.252.100 and 8888 is established and if you look at your log records you'll see all the expected stages of the routing flow for output traffic are shown including 42 44 45 and 51 however even with the new connection states stage 52 which is source nat is not shown the reason is that within the wan network of the class ap the address 172.31.252.100 does not need any address translation on the class ap since firstly it is on the same broadcast domain with the address of 172.31.252.254 on the internet switch and secondly it will be translated on that switch in order to connect to the address of 8888 to check this you can go back to the ping window on the class ap refer to the advanced tab and set the other ip address of the class ap that is 10.00.254 as the source address of your ping now if you start the ping again you will see that the stage 52 which is the source nat rule can be seen again for the first ping packet with the new connection states well everyone thanks for bearing with us on this tutorial we hope you have enjoyed our content so far stay tuned for the next session in which we'll be talking about the raw and filter rules and their differences and use cases when trying to secure a device as always, give us your questions in the comment section. See you in the next session.